Grace, you just made a statement. You said, she said, what about, someone said about the laundry and this and the third, and you said that she didn't do it. Who is doing the laundry and the chores around the house? My grandmother, her mother, comes over every day and takes care of literally everything you need to survive. Down to- How long has that been going on? Since I can remember, my grandmother and older sister raised me. My grandmother would come over every day, you know, noon to six or seven o'clock every day, make sure all the dishes was done, the laundry, cook for the family, you know, and my older sister made sure I was getting up and going to school ready. And your mother would be in bed? Right. And is that still going on today? It is. Yes. Well, I don't understand. You, you look great today. You had the ability know, to get I on look, an airplane to come out here today. I look physically great, but I did have to have someone fly with me because I have uh, sugar spells, and that's why he couldn't fly with me because we weren't getting along. But uh, I have fibromyalgia, I have hypothyroidism, insulin resistance, sleep apnea, narcolepsy, Nash disease, two gastric bypasses, depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. Oh, wow. And I take multiple medications just to function every day. And I lay in the bed wanting to die for the last nine years. And after I go home, I'll be in bed down for a week. And Sandra, speaking of that, I know that you said the mental and physical issues were the worst in the past, but honestly, we looked at your list That's of medications. Cool. Cool. You're on seven different medications just for psychiatric concerns, and some of them don't work with one another. Thank so you. who gave you these diagnoses and who gave you these prescriptions? Uh, my psychiatrist. You have one psychiatrist managing all of these medications? Yes. And who gave you the fibromyalgia diagnosis? Um, I had a neurologist that did that in 2011. Uh, in 2010, I had an episode. I ended up in the hospital, catatonic, basically, for about a week. I couldn't speak. I couldn't do anything. It was like I had a stroke, but they said I didn't have a stroke. It affected me mentally. I'm not, I can't think clearly. I can't focus. I can't remember things. My whole life changed and I went on disability and I've been like that ever since. Okay, and I saw that you were taking a stimulant and you're also taking a medication that they usually give to people with Alzheimer's. So yes, what's going on with because those Because my memory is so bad that they're giving me something to try to prevent it from getting worse. Sandra, do you know that depression can cause problems with memory and focus? Yes, I do. Okay, so mm -hmm. because your depression doesn't feel like it's properly under control yet, it these medications may control. or may not be the right medications for your concern. Right. So let me ask you something, Race. Right. You've lived with your mom, you've watched when she's ill, you, I, have, is all this for real, do you think, or is this something that she's imagining? You know, she's obviously being treated by a doctor. What's your take on it? I know she's depressed for sure. I know she's had depression. And I know she has some issues with memory and her fibromyalgia, but instead of trying to fix those things or working towards the future, she just says, oh, I have this, sorry, can't, you know. Mm -hmm. And uses it in some ways as a reason for why she's Absolutely. unable to do certain things. I right. mean, Sandra, do you see any validity in what your son's saying? I understand that he thinks that I'm kind of using it as a crutch, but I have really reached out to him and tried to be good to him. We took a trip uh, to the Mayo Clinic. Before we left, he broke down and cried and told me he loved me. He said, I do love you, Mama. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's the first time I've heard it since he was a child. Well, we get up there, and I simply ask him what he's looking at on his iPad, because I was watching TV. And he said, well, you just leave me alone. You're pissing me off. He blew up. He went crazy, and I didn't, I mean, he just went wild. Oh, but man. Sandra, let me just offer another explanation here. The way that you talk about race, there's a lot of backhand slaps, mm -hmm. a lot of sort of giving a compliment, but then taking away. One example is you saying, he said that he loved me, and then the next thing out of your mouth was, and that's the first time I've ever heard it. Race, have you said you love your mom more than once in your life? <laughs> yes, many times, all the time. Well, yeah, we I mean, believe that you love each other. I mean, clearly right. you're I here on the show here. for a reason. I love him more than anything. Right, and, and, and Race, when your mom is recollecting this particular event to you and how you just go off, off the handle, I mean, how, much is, how, how deep is that resentment? I don't see her ever realizing somebody else's point of view because these things that I just go off the handle, which her memory can somehow, she can put together things that happened a long time ago, but she can't remember what she told her five minutes ago. Right. But when she doesn't remember something, instead of saying, I don't remember, she'll plug something into that and make it sound worse than what it is and play the victim. 